Hello, my name is Jeff Jones, uh, CEO and lead developer at JMJ Applications. Uh, and the purpose of this video is to help anyone that's having trouble with on scroll listeners on a list view. Uh, it's one of the things that's plagued me for a while. I worked on it for hours, hours tonight, and, uh, and I'm not going to even use it. <laughs> so uh, I just wanted to show, put some use to my research and show everyone. Um, this video is based off the knowledge that you know how Android works, how Java's work, how the emulator works. There's certain things I may um, uh, over explain. Just skip past it or try to uh, blow over it. I just do that uh, from time to time. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so let's jump right into it. Um, the name of my list view that we're going to scroll is called Cast List. So to set that up, let's start building. Uh, we do Cast list and this is an inside of a void that's being called uh, after the on creator somewhere in the on create cast list dot so you set the name of your um, the name of your list view and do a dot right and if you're using Eclipse of course Eclipse gives you op gives you options here you want to do set on scroll listener that should be on here here we go Correct. I just clicked on it. Um, and I like to end off my statements here. So here we have a setup uh, on scroll listener. What, what, what's going on here, of course, is it's saying uh, no one is listening for me. There is no. I need someone to be listening for an on scroll listener before I can be set up like that. And normally, if you're used to setting on click listeners for buttons and things like that, uh, your actual Java class. Uh, here will be listening for your on-click listener, which I'm doing here. But uh, since we're just doing it for this one list, we don't have millions of list views that need to, uh, two or three list views that need to be listening for their scrolls, just the one guy, right? Uh, when you have buttons, you got seven, six different buttons, so you rather do it on the, uh, just more convenient to do it, have an on-click listener for your entire class, for your entire job. Well, we don't need that. But someone has to listen. So let's let him listen for himself. And able to do that, in order to do that, we have to do it inside of its parameters here. So let's do new. Uh, and the reason why we do new is because every time this Java is called, every time this is set up, we don't want it to remember anything from the last time he was set up or nothing like that. It's brand new. Erase everything out of memory and um, build this listener. A new what? A new on click, on scroll. Cap oh, I'm sorry. Low. No, no, capital O, right, okay. Capital S, C, oh, and I have a cheat sheet over here I'm using. Uh, listener, L I S T E N E R, right, okay. Uh, on scroll listener, and then it also has parameters that need to be set. Okay, and I think we're, oh, and it also has, uh, right, the function that's going to be run while it's listening. Okay, so now. The on scroll listener is set up and it's ready to go. Um, the way I like to set up my functions that run inside of um, um, inside of a void, this is a void that's being run or called. Um, I like to do it like this, right? So this allows me to put my parameters that's going to be run inside of here. All right. So the on scroll listener has a problem. He has built in voids, public voids that he is going to run. Uh, built in for you Java script guys, that's where I come from, uh, functions that he's going to run, right? Uh, just like Android has the uh, on create, right? Those type of voids. He has a void he needs to run. And he's saying, I, I have nowhere to run. No, it's not being set up. Even if you're not going to use the voids he run, he needs to be set up with those. Okay. So let's set those up for him. The first one he wants, uh, and the, I, don't, I don't believe it matters, the order, the order matters, but the first one he wants is his uh, on scroll void. On scroll void. When is this being called? Um, we're not going to, uh, we're going to discuss that later, but uh, yeah, but we need to set it up. Set it up now. Okay. On scroll. And I'll put this actual code uh, in the uh, comments of this video on YouTube, if you're watching this on YouTube. On scroll, and there.
here are some parameters. And you notice how I, let me set some space here. You notice how I set up all my things. This is how I set up everything, just so you guys know. Get everything set up and they put the parameters in there later. All right, so on scroll, there's a void that needs to run. And there's another one that needs to run called public. Void. Um, what, is, what is it? What is it? Let me look at my cheat sheet. I know it's on scroll listener or something like that. Uh, on scroll state. Change. Okay. Oh, and then we no parameters in there yet. And this function that is gonna run, the code is gonna run. Okay, so <clears throat> we still have errors. Um because what's happening now is he's going to he's glad that you set these voids right he wants to run when he's called when he's listening he wants to run these uh, voids he's great with heck grateful with that but he's he has variables that he's holding and he wants to stuff them in something when he calls this void he has a couple of variables he want to want to give you you have to set those up for him he doesn't know where to stuff them you need a jar to put these variables in you know um of course, when you set up variables in, in, in Java, you have to declare what type of variable it is and then give it a name. It doesn't matter the name. You can call your variables anything you want. And he doesn't matter the name either. What matters for him is the position. Uh, each variable is separated by a comma, and you have to set that that type of variable for him uh, after each comma. But in the name of the thing, that, that he, that's what he wants you to give him, a name. Just put it in. So it's up to you to determine that. Okay, so... The first one he is going to try to stuff into this on scroll is um, the actual list view itself, the entire list view. <clears throat> uh, so, of course, you would do list view, but for this, we have to do ABS list view. And, um, okay, so a list view. Okay, so now and then we have to name it. So we can name it Jeff, you know, we can name it. I don't know, Tim. It doesn't matter what we name our, our this list view, but just for uh, ease of memory purposes, let's name it view so we know that it's a view. And then comma. The next thing it needs is a. Hold on, look at my cheat sheet here. The next thing it needs is uh, an integer, right? And uh, we can name this integer anything. The number, right? Right or anything we want, uh, but just so we know what this number is, let's call it. Um, I believe it's yes, visible. Item. Okay, and don't mind my typing. I type slow, so what? I mean, this is a free lesson, you know. <laughs> I made it that out. Okay, so visible item count this one I'm gonna call that one and then the next variable that it has that it want to stuff somewhere is another integer and like I said we can call it anything but let's call it um, first visible item okay and now the last thing there there's one more thing that one more variable that it wants to give you, and it could be a string, it could be a list view, it could be a text field, it doesn't matter. I mean, you know, it could be any variable, but it just so happens to be, take a wild guess, another integer. <laughs> and um, it doesn't matter what we call it, but let's call it total item count. Okay. So, and that should be it. So, we have no more errors with this because now he's happy that when he calls this void, he knows what to put, where to put his uh, things that he's holding uh, and, and into these variables that we named. It doesn't matter these names. He just needs somewhere to put them. Now, he knows where to put them. And then, we can manipulate. We're going to use these and manipulate these later uh, when this void is called, but we'll, we'll deal with that later. Now, let's set up his um, integers that he needs. Integers. Uh variables that he needs when the on scroll listener calls this void 
when an all scroll listener calls his void, he calls, guess what he calls first? Or guess what variable he wants to stuff inside him first? Um, a list view. The name of the list, the, uh, the list view that's being, you know, that the on scroll listener was listening to when he was called. Who called me? That's what this is. And then we can name it anything, but guess what we're going to name this? All right. Um, separate by comma. There's another item. Uh, and guess what type of variable this will be? A string? A text field or whatever? No, an integer. <laughs> and we're going to call this one uh, scroll state. Okay. And now we have no more errors. We're good to go. Now, um, the, this this first uh, list view item that we're, we're not going to use this inside of here. The reason being is because when when the on scroll listener is global and you're dealing with four or five different list views or twenty different list views, um, then this is important because when this is called, this gives us the opportunity to know what list view this was called on. But we don't use this none here because it's being called by the only time this is called period is based on this list view we know which list view this is the guy who called you we don't care because we already know all right um, and those who have dealt with Java before they understand that you know because if it was a button we wouldn't attach this to every button we would just do one global on click listener sort of similar all right uh, I'm not gonna deal with this one yet let's focus on this one uh, even if you never use either one, you still need to build them so he knows where the stuff is answers, his results. Okay. Um, when is on scroll state change called? When the on scroll listener is listening for scrolls, when is this called? This is called obviously when the state of the scroll is changed. Um, each list view has three states: a idle state, not moving a um, scrolling state right and a inertial state so um, that's when this is called uh, any one of those states change if we're at zero and it goes to it, oh each state has a number associated with it the idle state is zero the scrolling state is one and the inertia state is two if we go from state zero to one, this guy is called, and then whatever's inside of here is ran. If it goes from, now say we're still scrolling. Well, it doesn't change. We're still at one, so it's not being called anymore. It was already called once, it's done. Now when you go from one, state one, which is scrolling, to state two, which is inertia state, then this is called, but just at one time when it's slowing down. Then when it gets back to idle, he's going from state two to zero, this is called again and then never called again until you change from zero to one okay so let's watch that in action let's see that happen what I'm gonna do is print to the log cat some words um, and if you don't understand a log cat um, it's it's a portion of Android where you can do your debugging uh, if you go to your Eclipse and go to Windows go to show view it should be here log cat or other and if you go to other and go to Android, Logcat should be there. If it's not, you didn't set up your clips right or our eclipses are different. Okay. Um let's see. Um let's go ahead and print something out to the log cat. So to set up a, a log cat entry, you need to do log dot and then you do what portion of the log cat you want to print out to the error, the debugging section. I like to print everything out in the error section, just that makes it stand out for me. Um, I don't know. And then you have to set the parameters and then close it off. We're done talking about that item. That's the way I think of that. 